In Ecuador, two Americans are looking for and finding an agriculture that is both healthy and affordable. Craig and I had worked in Costa Rica together on a, on a program, a rural health program, and I was, I was the supervisor of latrines, and uh, Craig was the, uh, the dental guy. Then we decided to do an agricultural project together, and that's when we started to grow honeydew melons here. And we had a, a really bad experience. Well, the first year went great. The problem was the second year we were bombarded with, with Agent Orange, which is what they were using on the rice production right next to our farm. So that really did a number on us. All the melons came out looking very distorted and horrible. And uh, at that point, we thought, we got to try something yeah. organic. The use of chemicals in agriculture has been standard since World War II, but few farmers understand their complex effects. And in Ecuador, where there are no government controls, you can buy these chemicals in a grocery store. He visto morir mucha gente intoxicada con plaguicidas. A lot of the labels are in English, and a lot of the farmers can't even read them. They mix pesticides with their arms. Um, they're there's a, a high rate of sterility in farm workers. I mean, it's bad in California, but here is a, it's a nightmare. Native farmers encouraged to modernize have been hard hit by health problems. But agriculture brings essential income into indigenous communities. Without money, they must migrate to the cities, where their traditions swiftly disappear. <laughs> Now, organic farming uses only natural, non-toxic inputs. It's less expensive, and the food gets a premium price on world markets. So Steve and Craig enlisted the support of native leaders. They found local agronomists and technicians to work with. They joined forces with Fundagro, an Ecuadorian nonprofit that helps small farmers. And they went to Harvard to develop the Organic Agriculture Project. People thought it was some of what we were doing was a little wacky. They voted Craig Save the Whales liberal at, 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 Harvard, at Harvard Business School. <laughs> they received funding from the Echoing Green Foundation, which funds social entrepreneurs. And the first fields were planted in September of 1991. This is the first time ever for an organic project of this size in Ecuador. There are four different test farms, and each one represents a different ecosystem. The project conducts research on biological controls of pests. The technicians experiment with natural fertilizers and grow a diverse array of crops and medicinal herbs to sell at local markets. Large-scale growers, subsistence farmers, and students come to the farms to learn about these techniques. Craig manages the business of the project, and Steve handles its social and political aspects. One of the things that's interesting that's resulted from this is that the Ministry of Agriculture here, which never looked at organics seriously before, is now, now wants us to hold workshops. They want to participate, too, so the combination is essential. One of the project's most important goals is to develop native crops for the lucrative organic export market. In the Andes, Steve and Craig are growing quinoa, the high-protein staple grain of the Incas. And in the endangered tropical rainforest, they are growing arasá. Arasá is a fruit that's very tart and has, we think has great potential in, in international markets, either as a jam or as a juice. It looks sort of like a, like a tennis ball but it tastes a lot, a lot better. <laughs> Today we're having a workshop to, to demonstrate the different, different techniques that we're using in organic agriculture to show them the different crops and to, to, to compare the differences between conventional agriculture and, and organic farming systems and to show how that they can really work in the areas where they live. Yeah. And they're also trying this, uh, this, the Arasa juice for the first time. A lot of them haven't had it yet. What do they think of it? Les gusta el jugo? Yes, 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 yes. So, they like it, I think they want some more, right? In the future, the project will be self-sustaining, supported by money from the sales of the products, and it will be managed by Ecuadorians. 
that's going to take some time and we're going to need to to continue to to raise money so that the research can continue here the danger with this is with any producing an average of 1,000 kilos of vegetables a day recently the fields were inspected by the organic crop improvement association the largest and most respected international certifier of organic farms this is what the inspector had to say about the project I would classify your work as some of the very best I have ever seen. This is groundbreaking work, which will have a significant impact well beyond the borders of Ecuador.